Hey guys, this is Dow Phoenix, and I wanted to talk about a serious review issue that I've noticed. So, I mean, there's a lot of problems with game reviews out there. There's so many things that we can nitpick and we can tear apart and we can say that they're right or wrong or they're a shitty reviewer or whatever the case may be. A lot of it ultimately is opinion, though. A lot of it really is, and if a reviewer doesn't seem to have an opinion that we like, we still have to at least acknowledge that it is an opinion, and we should just leave it be. That said, we should expect reviewers to stand by a certain standard when it comes to doing reviews. Uh, there's a lot of things that I'm talking about, of course, Namely, that they need to be honest and truthful about their evaluations and their review. They shouldn't lie about their findings. Now, if they have different opinions on things, that's fine. But lying would be like saying, oh, there's nine stages in the game when there's actually 16. That would be a lie. That would be offering false information that may potentially sway the review to make the game look better or worse than it may be because of that information being false. Now, that's not what I'm here to talk about today because that's obviously a huge issue that needs to be addressed, but that is an issue that is a lot more obvious. It's a lot easier to see. Another problem entirely is the fact that reviewers seem like that they can offer an opinion on a game without actually seeing it through its course. Uh, note in point, IGN's review of Strafe, uh, which is a first-person shooter game that's designed to look and play like a mid-90s FPS, most notably Quake and Doom. Uh, and it mixes that with roguelike elements. Uh, so essentially, you have stages that change around and uh, you get uh, power-ups and enemies and all this good stuff in different locations. So it's not the same game twice, you know, every time that you boot up the game. Also, another thing that roguelike games are infamous for is hard difficulty. These games are often really hard. Part of that, of course, is being the fact that the game changes every time you load it. So you can't really use memorization as a way to overcome the obstacles in the game. Uh, the best you can really get with memorization is as you see new elements of the game, new weapons, new enemies, new items, and so on, and you get used to what they do, how they function and perform. That gives you a little more knowledge on how the game plays, and therefore, it should help you in future runs with those games. However, IGN, they gave the game a 6.3, which I don't have a problem with that, I'm a little disappointed that they ranked it that low because I was really looking forward to this game. I was hoping that they would have been more enthused about it, but obviously they're the reviewers. They're the ones that get to play the games first, and therefore they basically share their opinions on the games with us viewers. However, they did it under completely false pretenses because their reviewer, whose name escapes me right now. I'm looking it up. I got it on this computer here. Uh, Leif Johnson, who claims to be a Quake veteran. He said he used to race through the original Quake back in 1996, which is a bold claim. I mean, when you say a statement like that and you're reviewing a game like that, you expect that that person is very knowledgeable about those particular games. However, by his own admission, he's never beat the game. He's never beat the game. Let me just let me just say that again. He's never beat the game. And so I, I was just completely blown by that. Not to mention that uh, originally I watched a two-minute video review, which didn't tell you like anything about the game really, which IGN is infamous for with their video reviews. They're always like two or three minutes long. And it's like, there's no information at all. Um, and then on the other hand, I watched a GameSpot review, which is only twice as long. It's like six minutes. And it told you basically everything you needed to know about the game. You can watch that six minute video and you'll know if it's a game for you or not. The IGN review is so muddled 
and lacking in any kind of details, even on the surface level, that a lot of people would just be completely confused and then they see that 6.3 and they're like, oh, it's a shitty game. And then they would never play the game because, obviously, but, you know, obviously a lot of people realize how shit this review was and they rightly call them out on it. And usually IGN and these other companies, whenever people call them out, they tend not to respond because, well, rightly so, they get a lot of trolls and things like that, but they've had to respond to a lot of these comments because these comments were really legitimate and really called into question what exactly happened here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up some comments right now on YouTube. I just need to uh, check this real quick here. Let's see here. Let me just see it. No, I, that's not the one. Okay. Actually, there's a comment I made on the GameSpot review, which, uh, which, which was a lot better. If you want to see a good review of the game, if you want to see something that actually tells you what you can expect in the game, check out the GameSpot review, because they'll, they'll set you straight here. Um, but yeah, let me go ahead. Now, don't, don't give any shit to uh, Damon Hatfield. He only narrated the re review. I'm sure some people might give him some shit. Uh, but here's what I said. Uh, 1 minute 28 seconds. This confirms this is an invalid review. Not playing a game to its conclusion, which I actually s screwed up, uh, and I put it with apostrophe S, my mistake, uh, is like reviewing a movie you walked out of in the middle of. I walked out in the middle of. I'll be sure to write Metacritic and Open Critic regarding or requesting that the review gets pulled from their aggregates because it wouldn't really be fair to the developer that their game may be represented by a essentially an incomplete review because this review is not completed because the game was not completed. Now I know some people want to say, well, there's certain games that that would apply to. As a matter of fact, the guy that uh, I'm going to respond to mentioned that rightly with a certain genre. Yes, there are certain game genres that you don't complete. Um, that can range anywhere from MMOs to sports titles uh, to various competitive multiplayer games such as League of Legends or Overwatch, you know, various other games like that. I completely understand that. And when it comes to those kinds of games, yes, we should have guidelines to determine when the review should be up. Uh, I'd say for like an MMO game, for instance, you don't need to complete the game, but you need to reach the end game, quote unquote, which is whatever the maximum level you can be in the game. That should give us a pretty good indication of... The fact that you experienced a pretty good, sizable chunk of the game, you uh, got to experience a lot of the quests, and you got to see how the different phases of the game played out. Um, a sports game, I think maybe you should be able to play through like a full season. It doesn't have to be like the full, like say for playing a baseball game. I don't expect your reviewer to play a 162 game baseball season. They can play a condensed version, like a 30 game season or something like that. And you know, may just mess with some of the different features that they might have like creative teams and franchises online play if it's available when they review it and that kind of thing those are the kinds of things we can expect out of those reviews because those are the kind of games they are they're not complete products now even though this is a roguelike game with potentially infinite levels bear in mind the game is laid out into a four world three stages per world structure so it actually does have an end. You can actually complete this game. So the onus is on the reviewer to go through that game from start to finish and tell us not whether or not they just like the game or not, but how the game changes and transforms through the entire experience. Uh, because a game that has a really strong opening, like imagine this, you play a game that has a really strong opening there's a game I really like called Alone in the Dark that a lot of people don't uh, from back in 2008. And that game has a lot of problems, I'll admit. But if you were to base a review of that game just on the opening scene of that game, chances are that review is probably going to be a lot better than if you base it on the entire game. And the reason being is because the opening scene is that much stronger than the game as a whole. And it's really not fair to strive to be judged as anything less than the sum of its whole parts, uh, which is what 
the uh, IG interviewer did. But anyways, I'm gonna bring this up. Dan Stapleton. He is one of the top guys at IGN. I think he is the IGN editor. Let me uh, double check here. Um, just I want to make sure I'm informed about uh, Dan Stapleton. Yeah, he is the IGN reviews editor. He is the editor of the reviews. So he is the one that gives the okay ultimately to any reviews that they submit. Uh, he says that Metacritic does not require every game to be he, he says it does not require every a game, which he, he screwed up too, you know, I'm, I'm not going to fault him on that, to be played in completion for a review to be valid. If they did, there would be no such thing as an MMORPG review, which I already discussed why it's okay that you can't complete an MMORPG, because you literally can't complete most MMORPGs. They have just too much content for it to be feasible to happen. Uh, if they did, okay, so some games are simply not intended to be finished in a reasonable amount of time or at all. Uh, we always strive to finish when it's reasonable, but when it's not, we'll always tell you that we didn't. Uh, the way I read that was they wanted to rush this review out. And as a matter of fact, this was literally the first review I've seen on this game. So they literally rushed this out. So it may not have been that the game was too difficult for the reviewer. Maybe the game wasn't that hard. I mean, although the reviewer did say... <laughs> That it was more punishing than Quake ever was, in his opinion. Um, he said it was very unforgiving. But, that being said, maybe the reviewer is plenty competent and skilled enough to do it. But, they had to meet these deadlines. But, instead of, just, I don't know, giving the guy maybe another day or two to see if he can at least get a little more progress. Or, say, like... Or just do like a review in progress saying this is what we think about it so far, but we haven't completed the game yet. You know, we'll let you know if things change or, you know, something like that. That would have been okay. But they finalize this review cut and dry and they're not going to revisit it. Um, the, the review is what it is, people. It is what it is and that's all we can expect and it's really sad to see. Uh, that this game may potentially receive negative press and publicity which may cause people to not play the game based on this because IGN is whether we like it or not one of the top reviewing organizations on the internet for video games and uh, you know I hope that this huge mistake that's happened will cause people to see them in a different light if they haven't already, of course. And uh, I really want to know the justification. I mean, if anybody from IGN, if uh, Leif or Dan or whoever um, happened to see this video, I really would like to open up a dialogue and I want to know why you're justifying what you're doing here. I mean, I understand that you guys work on deadlines. But we do also expect a certain level of integrity. As a matter of fact, if I remember right, IGN is also being hypocritical because there was a reviewer who they actually fired for giving a negative review of the Switch. True story, by the way. Um, Vince Ingenito, I think his name was. He did a review of Destiny. And he re IGN was like one of the last outlets to review Destiny. And there was a lot of people that were either shitting on the game or they were like praising it like to hell in high water unjustifiably. Uh, he was like one of the only reviewers that actually looked at the game at a very structured and objectionable format and told people everything that they needed to know about the game. And he gave it a fair assessment. It wasn't even like that high of a review score. I think it was only like a 7 out of 10. Uh, there was several outlets that gave a lot better score. And there weren't that many that gave a lower score. It was actually on the lower end of the spectrum. Uh, but the way he did it was in a way that was completely understandable. Like even somebody that totally loved Destiny at the time, like myself, I was able to identify with it. And obviously later on, I learned, well, yeah, this game actually is not that great um, after I played it for a long ass time. Uh, but, you know, I was able to completely identify with his viewpoints just by that video review and also reading some of that, uh, the main document, the main text review as well, because they always have like more information in the text reviews. 
Uh, and so they go from that to this crap fest review that they have now. You get like these little shitty two or three minute reviews that don't tell you anything about the game. And they prop a score down. They used to give you pros and cons so you can at least kind of see at a glance if for whatever reason the finer points of the review were missed in the video review. That you can at least see what the primary uh, focal points for their review score was. You know, the infamous too much water from uh, Pokemon. Uh, which um, somebody else actually mentioned there. There's actually a lot of people that criticize uh, this review. Uh, one guy said, we haven't beat the game, but here's a score. And then, um, you know, obviously there's a huge thread that, uh, you know. And, and I, like, there was another justification. He says most roguelites are designed not to be beaten except by the top tier of players. Maybe if it's like an original roguelike that's actually based on rogue, the games are like super difficult with the ASCII characters and shit like that. Yes, but most roguelike games that are created nowadays are plenty beatable. Um, you know, just gotta give it time and you gotta learn. Uh, games like Binding of Isaac and uh, Rogue Legacy and so on. You know, there's so many games in these genres. They're really not all that difficult either. Um, but yeah, that's all I really got, people. I mean, I just kind of want to do this quick little vlog. I just want to kind of, uh, kind of do a little banter about what is going on here. If you guys like what you saw, don't forget to uh, share this video with some friends, you know, get it out there. I want to hear what you guys have to say about this. I mean, do you think in a game like this that is beatable, that the reviewer should beat it first? I mean, or should we have to wait? Should we have to wait for the review? I know they're on strict deadlines, but I'm sure the developer would have been understandable. I'm sure, I mean, Devolver Digital is one of the top publishers in the industry right now. I mean, they put out some of the best games, and they're always really patient with their own developers uh, putting these games out. I just, I couldn't fathom them not sharing that same patience with the media organizations that review their products. Just saying, people. Uh, but till then, Down Phoenix out.